All right, welcome back to Cole's Farm, everybody. It's November 4th, it's about 3 p.m. Uh, this bring, brings hive number one to week 30. Inspection, it's uh, 73 degrees and feels like it. The humidity is 74%. The weather bug app has the pollen at a 2.6 and the only predominant source is ragweed. However, interestingly enough, earlier today, I saw a few bees on the centipede shoots. So they're still collecting some pollen from the uh, centipede before that goes completely dormant. Uh, let's see, last week I gave this hive 15 pounds of 2 to 1 syrup. I anticipate half remaining. Um, and then I have prepared 15 pounds of sugar candy for each hive. It's still over on the tractor, so once I get done inspecting this one for week 30, I'll go back and uh, grab the sugar candy and show, that, uh, show the installation of that on video. So. Let's see, I already took the uh, straps off. Um, let's get in there, pop the top, and see how Hive 30 is looking. All right, well, let's take a quick look together. So I was predicting half was gonna be gone. And as you can see, they, looks like they completely consumed. There might be a little left in there of the first jar. And then the uh, second and third jar, there's quite a lot left. So I have to make a decision. So I'm definitely gonna pull the jars off and then uh, decide what to do. I was kind of hoping they would all be gone and I could just uh, give them all the sugar, the hard candy, but since we have quite a lot left, we'll see how they're looking as far as stores go. And you know they say if you're supplementing your bees anything, if they need it, they'll take it, and if they don't need it, they won't take it. So given that it's only been a week and they drank one jar, which is about five pounds, um, it seems like they don't need as much, so I'm anticipating on seeing a lot of uh, capped honey, if not stored nectar, which will soon be capped.
All right, so this is a first. One, well, two first, right? Two, or first, uh, that's been the hardest it's ever been to get the inner cover off. And two, this is the first time I've ever seen them start storing or putting wax or comb on the inner side or the, on the inside of the inner cover. Not much to talk about on frame number one. Frame two, as you can see, a lot of stored nectar, some capped honey, same thing on the uh, side that faces the inside. Frame 3 has some nice weight to it, uh, they've done a nice job of building up some new comb, it looks like they're storing and capping nectar as they go, and definitely on that side as well, it's looking pretty good. Frame number four has got some nice weight to it. A lot of stored nectar, some capped honey as you can see. And on this side, same thing. Uh, we got some kind of queen cell there in the center. I'm gonna pinch that down. Nice, nicely capped honey. So they're definitely doing their part preparing for winter. Frame number five, a lot of stored nectar. Also has some nice capped brood as well. Kind of hope for a more, you know, more of a solid brood pattern. Uh, that's interesting. There's quite a few, well, queen cells going on there. I'm gonna pinch those down as well.
This is frame six. Um, probably can't tell on camera, of course, but if you go slightly to the left of center, right below the cap brood, uh, there's quite a few eggs. So the queen is still here. She's still doing her thing. A lot of stored nectar. Got a yellow jacket trying to crash the party. Nice spun larva. So frame six, pretty much right in the center. Nice, uh, nice brood. Frame 7, not really too much to talk about. I was just taking my time trying to look for the queen. Same thing, capped honey, stored nectar, some capped brood. Uh, let's see, trying to look for eggs on this one as well. Not going to spend too much time, but so far so good. This is beautiful. This is frame eight. The side that faces the inside of the, inside of the hive is just as nice. But look at all that. Capped honey and stored nectar. <laughs> this is nice. Same thing, look at that side. Frame number eight, heavy too.
All right, that was the uh, top box of Hive One, looking pretty good. Got a lot of stored nectar, um, a lot of capped honey, some good looking brood. So just gonna move this aside and get into the bottom box. This isn't going to end well for the bee on my pinky. There he goes. 
quite a few dra uh, drones, actually a lot of drones, well, more than usual, I guess, from what I'm, well, used to seeing, in the uh, bottom box here. This is frame eight. Bunch of drones down this way. All right, overall things look pretty good. Um, hive number one, that was the original hive here at Cole's Farm. Installed that, uh, the new pack in late March, I believe. And they have, uh, they've been performing quite well. If you look back at the history, ended up replacing the original queen that came with the nuke. 
late April, had her for four weeks, and then made the decision to replace her because her brood pattern was very spotty. Extremely glad I did. This queen, uh, if they haven't superseded or swarmed, which I don't believe they have because I've been out here every week to every uh, two weeks, and you know they've been looking great since. So I'm gonna turn the camera off for a second. I'm gonna go grab the candy board so I can show you one, and then uh, install this. Well, install the candy board on this hive, and then the other two off camera. Um, the two mason jars that are about three quarters the way full. So there's probably about 10 pounds of two to one syrup. I'm just gonna hold off on that for now. Um, I'm gonna bring it back to the house, and then next week when I'm back in hive two and three, if they're looking a little light, I might supplement them that. And uh, either, well, either in addition to the candy board, or I'll take the candy board off for a week so they can have some two to one. So, like I said, I'm gonna turn the camera off real quick, grab the candy boards, and then we'll resume. All right, just like that, we're back. As you can see, that's the uh, candy board. So basically it's a, let's see, a two by one, or maybe a two by half inch uh, piece of pine. Cut it down to size, put some half inch um, metal cloth as the base, put a sheet of uh, wax paper in there, and just use some leftover wood. So the back side is uh, designed for ventilation, and the hole in the front is right by the half inch uh, entrance exit hole for the bees. So just going to take the top off, take the inner cover off put this underneath the inner cover so it's directly on top of the top box cover it with the inner cover um, with the hole down for winter and then put the uh, telescoping cover back on All right, let's take a look. So I initially thought it was going to crush all the bees sitting on top of the uh, top of the uh, frame, but there is enough space. There's bee space in between the brood box and the metal cloth, so the bees can access it. And as you'll see, here's our first customer. Whoop. Very cool. And I think we have another customer up there. Well, hopefully that doesn't cause any problems. It's not totally flat because of the cloth. Didn't really think of that, but I think with the, uh, well, once I ratchet it down with the straps, it'll close that off. So that shouldn't be a problem. Awesome. All right, well, thanks for watching, everybody. It's Coles Farm, North Carolina, coming from uh, Jacksonville. This is week 30's inspection for hive number one. And in addition to that, the installation of the very first uh, candy board that I've made and installed on a hive. So as you all can see, there's a little bit of a gap caused by the mesh. Um, basically, I just cut the mesh exactly to the size of the board and stapled it to the bottom. Creates a little bit of a gap, but I'm not too worried about it because I keep all my hives strapped down. So a little tension from the uh, ratchet straps should uh, sandwich the two down, eliminate that space. And as you can see, the three designed uh, openings will allow for ventilation. The sugar is supposed to absorb any moisture caused by the hive, which is a concern during the winter. And then the front allows them to, uh, to come and go. So overall, things look great for hive number one. A lot of uh, stored nectar, a lot of capped honey, 
didn't see the queen, but I did spot some eggs and some nice cat brood. There were a few queen cells, possibly, that they got pinched down. No big deal. So the, uh, the odd thing to say, to me at least, is this might be the last inspection for a month, I'm thinking. So it's November 5th. I might stretch this out to about December, give them a full 30 days on their own instead of like the two weeks that I have been doing. Um, and I think during that inspection, I'm just going to come out, pop the top, see how much candy's remaining. And if things are looking good, I might stretch them out another month. Uh, keep in mind, you know, this is a kind of reminder of myself, but other beekeepers. So during the winter, you want it to be, well, ideally 75 degrees or so. But, you know, just be wary of the, uh, or be mindful of the temperature before you open the hive so you don't chill the brood. Just one, uh, one piece of uh, advice for everybody that's unaware of that. So, all right. Thanks for watching, Coles Farm. Uh, see everybody in a month.